Hello everyone. I am going to do a sermon which is part of my school requirement. As we all know, uh, we are going through a very difficult moment of COVID-19. So all our classes have been moved online. And uh, my being here is an opportunity for my classmates and my professor to have access to my sermon so they can be able to criticize it and give me um, some constructive feedback. So um, since I am publishing it officially on YouTube, I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit is going to guide me as I present it. And guide you to also to grasp something, to benefit something from it. Um, with that said, um, we will get started. Um, the scripture we are going to read from is, uh, I mean, I've already read it. So it, it's Matthew 21 verses 1 through 9. And uh, I'm recommending you to also read it. And the sermon title is Jesus' Triumphant Entry into the Jerusalem of Our Heart. Shall we pray? May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Scripture tells us that Jesus set off from Galilee to Jerusalem, which would be the last destination of his ministry, where he would give his life to save the world. As he approached Jerusalem, he sent his disciples to have the donkey and its colt released so that he could ride them, according to Matthew, though other gospel writers mention only the donkey. He made a triumphant entry into Jerusalem and went straight to the temple where he started turning over the tables of vendors, money changers, and so forth. This sermon is going to address five questions, namely, what can Jerusalem symbolize in our context? What did a donkey or cult symbolize and what does it symbolize for us today? What do tree branches and spreading of clothes or on the road mean? Are we going to use donkeys, tree branches, clothes and so forth to honor Jesus? And then I give a conclusion. First point, what does Jerusalem symbolize now? Or what does the temple symbolize? It symbolizes your heart and mine. It is your life and mine. According to the Jews, Christians, and even Muslims, Jerusalem was regarded as the holy city. The name means city of peace. It is called Zion. Mount Zion is the hill on which the fortress of the city was built. In iniquity, it was regarded as the center of the world, the center of worship where God resided. But I want to tell you today that Jerusalem symbolizes you and me because God refused to reside in a building or a city, but he wants to reside in a human heart. The temple is you. Just imagine yourself as Jerusalem, the city of peace. Just imagine yourself as Mount Zion, a hill on which a lamp is put to shine brighter to all its surroundings. 
Just imagine yourself as a holy place where God dwells. So when this text says that Jesus is entering Jerusalem and the temple, it means he is entering in your heart and mine. Now, what did a donkey or cult symbolize and what does it symbolize for us today? Commonly, kings rode majestic horses to mark their triumphant entries into Jerusalem. But ironically, Jesus rides a donkey and a colt. This is peculiarly a humble king entering and fulfilling the old prophecies as we find it in Zechariah 9, verse 9, and Isaiah 62, 11. Jesus is riding into Jerusalem as the servant king, bringing salvation and restoration of God's kingdom. He enters just as Judah entered Shiloh for the Feast of Booths. In fact, it is during Passover with large crowds from all over the places that have come to the harvest festivals or the commemoration of God's protection of Israel during her 40-year period of wandering in difficult desert conditions. This is what they called Feast of Booths. When the crowds see Jesus riding on the colt, they quickly make connection to the royal procession of their communal hope in the coming of the Son of David. They held a long time belief that a Davidic king or a prophet like Moses would come to restore the covenant relationship with God and restore the earthly Davidic kingdom. So they give him the honor and glory. Thus, though his kingdom is not earthly. The point here is the donkey and colt imply that Jesus is a king lifted high for all the crowds to see. What do these animals symbolize for us today? They symbolize you and me. They mean that you and I should release ourselves to be used by the king. We should be in a posture of a donkey and a colt to be able to let Jesus be on top of us as we usher him into Jerusalem, into the center of our hearts. When we take the role of a donkey or a colt, we let Jesus emerge. We let him be seen by everyone along the highway as we travel into the city towards the temple of our hearts. But how many times have we tried to lift ourselves to be the objects of praise? Even as pastors or leaders, we often want all praises and glory to be ours. The donkey or cult is letting Jesus be the recipient of all glory and honor. As Jesus enters the Jerusalem of our hearts today, he does not need the donkey or cult to lift him up and prove that he is king. He needs you and me to celebrate him as king. It takes humility for us to let him climb on us and move in a royal procession as, as king. When he is riding, he, he is the one who is showing the direction to the animals, which is to you and me. And when we humble ourselves, he will guide us, and we will not lose anything. Instead, we will have the privilege to ride with a king, 
just imagine you are riding with the Queen Elizabeth II or with one of the presidents that you have ever highly respected. Now this, is, this King Jesus is more than a human king. He is divine king. So what a, what a privilege. Another question. What do tree branches and spreading of clothes on the road mean? Actually, after the crowds identified Jesus' ride with a royal procession, they cut tree branches and spread them on the road. Tree branches were traditionally used during festivals as symbols to show that the king was entering. They were required for the Feast of Booth that we have explained earlier or for any royal events. So they spread also their garment on the road like royal carpets on which Jesus would ride. They did all that to confirm that Jesus is a king. Just imagine yourself, you know, removing your coat or your, your shirt or your expensive cloth. He says, I have it here. This is super wax. It's an expensive cloth from my home country but we look like this just imagine you removing it and putting it on the floor on the road for Jesus to ride on actually you know when we go to our parties we usually wear those our favorite or our expensive clothes so these are the kind of clothes that they were taken off and putting on the road for Jesus to ride on in order to give him honor. Can we also do that for him today to give him honor? The crowd made also public acclamation and celebration as they sang the last of Hallel psalms, usually sang at major festivals. They shouted with joy and acclamation to the Messiah King, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So Jesus is one who comes to save. Are we going to use donkeys, tree branches, clothes, and so forth to honor him? Jesus is trying to enter into your heart and mind. Even in moments like this one of COVID-19, he is no longer entering in commotions on animals like donkey or colt, but he enters quietly in our human hearts. As our hearts shine brighter for other people to see Jesus and know him, they become like donkey and colt who lift Jesus high for other people to see him. He is no longer entering with tree branches. Hmm? He is entering in hearts that are joyfully rising in a banners that is full of enthusiasm to show that we are excited and ready to welcome him in. He no longer needs 
our garments or red carpets rolled down before him to prove that he is our king. He needs our knees. He needs humble hearts that bow down inwardly and allow him in. He is not even requiring us to dress royally or to sing some royal or political chants so that he may enter our lives triumphantly as a king. We usually dress our fancy gowns even when we preach or our, our, our clothes just because we love them. But Jesus is a meek king who requires of us nothing extraordinary, but just a genuine humble heart where he can enter and dwell with us. His triumphant entry and reign will manifest only if we allow him to enter so he can turn over the tables of our hearts, according to verse 12. That is, to reverse the order of our lives by transforming us into God's will and by saving us. Therefore, beloved in the Lord, Will you let him enter into the Jerusalem of your heart? It takes humility to let him in. Will you let him enter into your life during this Lenten moment and during this chaotic moment we are going through? Will you give him all the honor he deserves by letting him ride you and guide your heart? Will you joyfully give him inner acclamations and the hosannas as the only one who saves? These are questions that you and me can ponder on during this moment and decide whether we want Jesus in or not, whether we want to give him all the joys and honor or not. May God bless this word. Amen.